Welcome to the special edition of TFR Let's Talk for SOL Conf. I'm your host, Swapnil Bharatiya, and my next guest is Julie Gunderson, DevOps Advocate at PagerDuty. Julie, it's great to have you on the show today. Oh, thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited about the topic as well, and which is about a chaos engineering culture. Before we talk about the culture, I want to understand what exactly is chaos engineering? Is it like taking the steering wheel from your car while you're still driving or something different? Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Um, actually, chaos engineering, it's about testing our systems. Uh, and it's actually about having a hypothesis and testing that hypothesis. So, you know, one of the jokes is, isn't all of engineering chaotic? Um, well, with chaos engineering, you have a theory and you're testing it. So you're not just randomly injecting failure into your systems. Right. And what role do chaos monkeys play in chaos engineering? Well, they throw banana peels all over the place. Causes a whole big mess. Um, Chaos Monkey is uh, a tool that Netflix came out with that went in and just, uh, well, ran chaos in, in production systems. And uh, so it was a great way for Netflix to test their systems. And that's wonderful for Netflix because when a title can't play right now, it doesn't have as much of a ramification as if you can't pay a bill with your bank. And so yeah, Chaos uh, Engineering really evolved. Yeah, if you look at the operations of Netflix, there are so many moving parts there. Uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, it kind of originated at uh, in, uh, Netflix. And since you mentioned evolution, so can you quickly talk about how it has evolved? Because now we talk about it should be part of your strategy. We'll go to the strategy part later. But if you can just talk about how it has evolved with the evolution of the whole cloud native landscape also. Well, absolutely. I mean, so it really did start with Netflix. But then it became this way for us to have our systems be able to talk back to us. So at PagerDuty, for example, we consider incidents a gift, right? Because our systems can't talk directly to us. We have to talk to them through a proxy. So with chaos engineering, you kind of get to have that controlled conversation with your systems. Now, there's a concept of you can only practice chaos engineering in production and you can never practice it in testing. And I would say that that's not always the case. While practicing chaos engineering in production is preferred, it's not a requirement. Some systems are just simply not ready to have chaos engineering performed in production, and that's okay. I mean, we actually had a podcast with Bruce Wong, um, who was over at Netflix, now at Stitch Fix, uh, where we talked about practicing chaos engineering just in the form of tabletop experiments, just, just pieces of paper sitting around a, a table talking through what you think would happen with your systems. And so it's really about having that hypothesis first. Right. Um, can you talk about the importance of chaos engineering uh, or uh, hypothesis? Because you have to think of a lot of scenarios that things can go wrong uh, so that you are, your systems are prepared for it in advance. Well, nobody was prepared for the whole ransom attack that happened on Colonial Pipeline. So these things are beyond our, you know, scope. But there are a lot of things where human error takes place. We do know, you know, when it's like Christmas season, a lot of spikes will happen. So can you talk about what the components that you look at when you plan your chaos engineering strategy? Well, first of all, I would say maybe don't plan chaos engineering on Black Friday. If you're a major retailer, you do want to think about the times that you are going to be doing this. Um, at PagerDuty, we do it every Friday, right after lunch, failure Fridays. So it's not three o'clock in the morning on a Wednesday when we're practicing this. It's scheduled. People are prepared. They know that this is going to be happening. And that's a big thing because oftentimes people say, well, don't you get to test your people with chaos engineering? You get to see if they're on their toes. That's not the purpose of it at all. As a matter of fact, if chaos engineering is practiced right, you can build a culture of trust and knowledge sharing and a learning organization. And it certainly isn't about tricking somebody to see if they're going to be the fastest to acknowledge an alert. Yeah, so it's, this is not more or less like a file drill and then you heard, this is not a drill, <laughs> you're really in trouble. Yeah. Yeah, you want people to know what's going on. You want customer support to be aware that you're practicing chaos engineering because even if it's only against 2% of production, that could still cause an issue for some of your customers. And you want people to know that, that this is happening, especially if you have some sort of threshold or metric 
that is breached and you need to to stop your experiment and just hit that red button. Right. When we talk about technology or if you look at pager duty, there are two aspects. One is tech part of it and one is people part of it or culture part of it. So when we do look at uh, chaos engineering, you know, you, you, you mentioned some tools that are there. Which aspect is stronger, culture part, which involves people or tech part? I say culture part because there are so many tools. You can find a tool to help you with pretty much everything. And if you can't, somebody's going to just invent it anyway. It's about the people. And it's about, can you get your organization bought in? Can you get people to understand why are we practicing chaos engineering? Why is this important to us? And then how do you develop your people? So one of the great impacts that it can have on culture is this is a great way to train new folks to your organization. You can train them on how you handle incidents. You can also test your systems and your processes to make sure they're working. And tools are great, but I wouldn't start with tools. I'd start more with the culture and make sure that people are even comfortable doing this. Since we are talking about people and it's easier to deal with technology than to deal with people, uh, either from pager duties perspective or any other organization, you know, how to convince them that they should bring chaos engineering as part of their strategy? Well, one of the things that you can do, especially for organizations that are very fearful of chaos engineering, and, and I talked about this in my talk, we use words, they're unfortunately named, C-levels don't love hearing the word chaos, they don't love hearing the term injecting failure, what you first wanna do is help them understand how this is going to help your organization make your systems more resilient. And that's why I'd say if you have a very resistant or scared uh, organization, then start with the tabletop experiments. Show how you're thinking through these. Also, make sure that you have the right gates in place so that if an experiment turns out uh, to be not going so well, you can stop it and you can roll it back. Right. Do you believe more in gates or guardrails when it Guard comes rails. to chaos engineering? Yeah, you want to be able to understand. So at Netflix, right, it stream <clears throat> starts per second. If they start to see a major impact in that, then understand when to pull that experiment back. So you have to have metrics. And that's why with chaos engineering experiments, they need to be well thought out. There needs to be... A, a, an idea behind what you're going to expect and you need to be able to understand what metrics are being impacted. You certainly don't want to practice chaos engineering and end up breaking a, a major SLO because of it. Uh, if you look at, uh, uh, I want to hear, you know, your thoughts on the trends, the patterns they are seeing. If you look at last year because of this crisis, a lot of companies, they rushed to the cloud, you know, it is a transformation. Uh, now this year they are settling down. It's more or less like the honeymoon period is over and they are having a cloud or cloud native hangover. Uh, so uh, what kind of trends you are seeing that com whether companies are embracing uh, chaos engineering culture because they have moved so they don't even know how resilient their systems are. I would say that organizations are embracing the culture of reliability. And that's what it comes down to. People were caught off guard with the events over the last year. There were organizations that succeeded wildly because they were well prepared in the digital era. And then organizations that were more brick and mortar that didn't feel like they ever really needed to change their model that all of a sudden were caught unaware. And in a way, if you think about it, just planning for things like that can be part of a chaos engineering experiment. Jason Yee um, at Gremlin and I, we did a podcast episode at uh, the beginning of March a year ago, or April a year ago, and we kind of talked about this, thinking through these things that can happen that we weren't prepared for, such as the events of the last year, and how do you incorporate that into your strategy moving forward? It's time to maybe start thinking a little bit beyond our systems as well. But now, after this mad dash to making things digital, to transforming to the cloud, to reaching customers and consumers in different ways, now people are there, but these systems were built really quickly in some situations. So now how do we go ahead and make sure that these systems are resilient and stay resilient and that we can make them better 
in focus of the customer, because that's what all of our, everything we should be working on should be in focus of the customer. As we are talking about, you know, just changing uh, the culture so you can embrace chaos engineering, but as you embrace it, it kind of also builds or changes the culture of an organization as well. So can you talk about just reverses that how chaos in embracing chaos engineering changes the culture of an organization itself? Absolutely, it builds a culture of trust. Chaos engineering, Builds a culture where you are embracing failure. Failure is no longer something that you should be afraid of. We're embracing it and we're taking this opportunity to learn, to make our systems, to make our people, everything better in service of the customer. Excellent. Uh, Julie, once again, thank you so much for taking time out today and talk about, uh, uh, explain, you know, uh, chaos engineering, the culture and the impact. And I would love to have you on the show again. Thank you. Absolutely, and thank you for having me as well.